All right, we are back, everybody. Spurs basketball is right around the corner, and that means it's time for us here at Project Spurs to give you our insight and our best knowledge. Welcome to the Project Spurs Roundtable, powered by Project Spurs. I'm your host, Stephen Anderson, along with Casey and Paul. We are here to talk Spurs basketball and give you some of our knowledge right up to Wednesday's season opener against the Oklahoma City Thunder. We just wrapped up the preseason, so let's get into it, Paul. Uh, Spurs two and four finished the record in the preseason. You know, cause a little Spurs fans to worry a little bit, but are you worried? No, I mean you can't you can't take a lot out of the preseason. You know, the, the coaches mainly play their core players about um, three quarters a game plus. I mean, really, if you look at that last game against Houston, he never Pop never actually played like the full ten guys until that final game. He would pretty much a lot of those games he would hold people out or he would just play them a few minutes and tinker with different lineups just to see where people were fitting in. So no, I mean you can't take a lot away from the preseason. There's some little trends there, like the three point shooting is going to be a depth something we might want to talk about. But outside of that, I mean you can't look at the wins and losses and you know their play overall. Right. Steven, did you say that you had someone tweet you and ask if the Spurs are going to make the playoffs? I did. Someone actually tweeted me saying, you know, are they going to make the playoffs? It's preseason, guys. Come on, it's preseason. There are two kinds of uh, Spurs fans. It's the ones who take it way too seriously and yeah. the ones who say, wake me up after the rodeo round trip, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. The guys who live and die. I think the ones who are going to have the hardest are the ones who live and die with every single win and loss because this, I, the analogy I use is trying to change the tire on a car while the car is still moving. Mm -hmm. You are inputting LaMarcus Aldridge, David West. I know the ball movement, and we'll talk about LaMarcus Aldridge yeah. here in a second, but through six preseason games, it's just getting started. And if you brought this question up to pop, <laughs> If you've seen reporters be embarrassed, I would be afraid to even ask what you just asked me to Greg Popovich. <laughs> no, I mean, as you guys all know, I'm pretty sure we would get a uh, get a uh, death stare. We all would get that More death stare from that. Pop, wouldn't we? <laughs> no, but uh, speaking of preseason, Kyle Anderson, who was in the Summer League MVP, he had a pretty good preseason, but is he ready to be Kawhi Leonard's backup? I say yes. I mean, the guy has played very well. Of course, he has m m made some mistakes here and there in the preseason, but he, he seems to me to have proved himself. Casey, what do you think? I think that Kyle Anderson's a little too raw. I know that he was the Summer League MVP, but a lot of that was built on how he scored. He averaged over 20 points in the Summer League. And what I just see is a guy who, when he goes up against NBA bodies, I know we just kind of discounted the mm -hmm. preseason a little bit, yeah. but when he goes up against NBA bodies, he scores a lot of his points, if you look at his heat map, in and around the paint. He needs, I don't know if it's more size, more bulk, he still looks like that kid who came out of UCLA, mm -hmm. and I know he can put up those kind of numbers in the summer league, but I don't think we're going to see it in, during the regular season. Paul, let me ask you, obviously, Kyle Anderson, Summer League MVP, like mm -hmm. we just said, he seems to improve a lot, but where are some areas of concerns that you see for him? Well, it's always going to be the defense. You know, he doesn't he doesn't have the foot speed to match up with, with some of the threes in the NBA. Uh, he pops one up to four a few times, but, you know, right now it's definitely on defense. Uh, he's kind of uh, been okay putting himself in that second, you know, with Manu, with, with Patty Mills, with Borstel. He really fits in well there just uh, offensively with the passing, but, yeah, defense is really going to be the tail here. You know, if they're playing the Oklahoma City Thunder and, you know, he has to spell quiet for a few minutes, can he really stay with uh, Kevin Durant? There's no way. Uh, but, you know, then again, he might be going against some second teams, um, you know, second unit uh, wing defenders so, I mean wing players so you know it's going to be interesting really I just think it's always going to be looking at, at the defense and his foot speed. You remember I think it was against um, was it the Pistons when he uh, led the team in assists with five yep. after that game and even at the Rockets game there were some passes I think he gave one to Manu uh, I think it was a no look pass right there in the lane it was beautiful one thing that Pop said that I totally agree about Kyle Anderson is there are some things the way he sees his court vision you cannot teach that, and I think that's more than anything why he made the roster. Yeah. You know, one thing that we've noticed here from the Spurs is that obviously their biggest accusation was LaMarcus Aldridge over the summer. He uh, obviously has fit in. It seems to fit in quite nicely. But, of course, we talked about Spurs fans. They've been a little bit... <laughs> <laughs> reactionary. Yeah, reactionary <laughs> to his play. But one thing, Paul, you know, he has obviously, he said to himself, it's going to take some time for yeah. me to fit in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you know you could definitely see that there was that, that Miami game where he just kind of just fit in seamlessly with Tony Parker, with Tim, with uh, Kawhi on the floor. Um, and then you know there was a, there was that, that Phoenix game where you know he really struggled. Um, you know it kind of looked like the, the tempo slowed down every time they gave him the ball. He was kind of just figuring out do I do I post here? Do I kick it out? 
Um, and then he, you know, he saw it, and then he stayed after, after, after that game, and he shot, you know, shot jumpers for almost like two hours after a basketball game. And that was one of the first times that it's happened here in San Antonio that people can remember. Uh, and then, of course, he, he, found, he found it again uh, in that last game against uh, Houston, where he was kind of just flinging the ball over the place. If he saw a double team coming, he would kick it out to his teammates. So, you know, it's going to take some time. You're going to see those, those moments. You know, it's, it's going it's, like to, said, he's a, he's a big part of the offense. Uh, he and Kawhi are both going to have to figure out, you know, when does somebody take the role? When does, you know, do I step back and things like that? So, but yeah, it's going to take some time, but he'll figure it out eventually. There's so much to say about LaMarcus Aldridge. I, from what I saw in the preseason from his time in Portland, I'm so excited to see how he's going to fit it into this offense. We all know that he is the king of the mid-range jumper. And what I love about Greg Popovich is in this era of analytics-based front offices, he says, I'm going to do it my way. And he brings in David West and LaMarcus Aldridge, who guys who are the we only want to score in the paint or from the three they would just absolutely wince at lamarcus and uh, david west coming in but i think the biggest thing that david is gonna the biggest impact is he's gonna rejuvenate things for tony for uh tim duncan and i from what i saw especially against houston you said it paul he can both be incorporated in the ball movement and he can also uh, uh play his game and score his way especially when they see a favorable matchup in the low post. Anytime he's one on one with someone, that's basically a favorable matchup. And the most important thing to remember with him is he made more field goals than any other player in the NBA last year, even more than Steph Curry. Yeah. One thing I'm, I'm excited to see is that you know he's going to have David West next to him. He's going to have, you know, obviously Tim Duncan next to him. But one thing I'm interested in, and Paul, I want to get your take on this as well. Is this the new Twin Towers? With uh, with Lamarcus and, and mm -hmm. Tim, yeah, I mean it's 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 a version of it. Uh, you know, we got to see how they play before you you know you put somebody in the conversation with David Robinson. Uh, but yeah, you can see Tim Duncan and, and, and Lamarcus. They have such a high basketball IQ. Each of them. Uh, there there was that first game uh, against Miami when they played together. When they Tim, you know, Lamarcus brought the ball down. He kicks it to Tim. Tim holds it, just tells him to get into the high low, and then easily just kicks him for the for the for the layup. And I also seen that something we, we didn't talk about was uh, the impact on Tony Parker. You kind of saw it against Houston the other night. Uh, they were running a lot of that pick and pop. He and Lamarcus and Lamarcus talked about this after the game where uh, in the first half he was giving uh, Tony was feeding all the open passes to LaMarcus for those pick and pop jumpers but then you know in the second half the defender started going toward his way so then he knew that Tony had the, the alley and open the lane so he had about uh, 10 to 12 points that second half and that's gonna that's gonna help uh, you know having him in the offense just is easily gonna help uh, some of the other guys like Tim and Tony all right all right so it's time for us to look into our crystal ball a little bit guys um, we do our best here to kind of Look in there and make our predictions a little bit. It was early in the season, so let's start out. First off, I want to get you got your guys' take here. First question: Where do you see the Spurs finishing one through eight, Paul? Uh, I'm going to say the, the if, if divisions don't count this year, I'm going to say the three seed. I think it's going to be Golden State and Houston just because they have their te teams put together. So I think right now, like the three seed. Casey, do we get to pick the the eventual <laughs> NBA champion as well? <laughs> It is so early right now to make this guy. I mean, they, they have re-overhauled everything. Uh, I, I would say I'm right around where Paul is, thir third or fourth seed, 55-54 uh, wins, something like that. I know you guys have a lot more than that. Yeah. I say, uh, you know, for me, injuries, if inj everything's fine with injuries, I say they could be as high as two, actually. You know, wow. they have a very good team. Injuries do take part in a lot of things. Golden State. Obviously, got had was very lucky last year injury-wise. So I say one or two for the Spurs. Maybe I say two. Uh, but we'll, you know what? That's why we're recording this for fun, and we'll see how we we'll see our predictions at the end of the season. <laughs> Next one. Um, how many wins do you think they'll get, Casey? Let's start with you. Yeah, I'm going to go 54. Okay, Paul. Uh, I got if if not, not not no major injuries. I'm going to say 62. Oh, I'm, on, I'm on a heady. I'm going to say 63 with no, no injuries, nothing like that. But, again, we all know the Western Conference is extremely tough. Obviously, if one through eight, anything could happen. But uh, that's our, our uh, take for this Project Spurs roundtable. Uh, for Casey, Paul, I'm Steven Anderson. And don't forget to go to ProjectSpurs.com to get all of your Spurs needs. And, of course, Paul and I will be doing our very best to give you all of the Spurs action this season. So for all of us here... Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next Project Spurs Roundtable.